Hey there, this is Jacqueline with The Fable Tree. Today's tutorial is a little bit more advanced, but I know you can do it. So we're going to start out with a floral drawing that I made in Procreate. And if you don't have Procreate or any floral um, drawings or anything like that handy, you can click the link in the description to go to my website to download this one. And that way you can follow along even without an iPad. All right, so I'm just going to drag and drop my file onto the Illustrator canvas. I'm going to zoom way out so that you can see what's going on. This is my Glowforge sized canvas. So this thing is huge. That's on purpose. OK, so I'm going to come up here. Do you see image trace? You can click this little arrow next to image trace to come up with the presets. Now, for this one, since it only has one color and we want to get rid of the white background, I'm going to use silhouettes. If I were uh, tracing something with a lot more colors, I would probably use three or six color or 16 colors, and then um, you can adjust from there. Okay, so I'm gonna test and just get, give a, get a little preview of what that's gonna look like. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'll hit expand, and I'm gonna make this a lot smaller. I'm going to go four inches wide. Okay, now we can zoom in so that we can see it a little bit better. All right. Now, let's see here. I'm going to rotate this a bit. I kind of want this to look like a little frame when all is said and done. So I'm going to rotate it until it looks nice. Move it over to the side. I'm going to copy, paste. I'll use this little button here to flip it horizontally. If you don't have this panel set up yet, no big deal. You can also go up to Object, Transform, Reflect, and make sure that you're reflecting it over the vertical axis. All right. So now it is a mirror image of the other one. So this is starting to look like a nice um, little frame for a sign. Okay, I'm gonna select both of these, come over to my alignment panel and vertical align bottom. Now they're already aligned vertically, but if they weren't, uh, that would have shifted it into place. If you don't have this panel, it's object align, vertical align bottom in this case. Okay, so. That is something to um, keep in your back pocket. So at this point, I just want to take a look at what this is um, what this is going to do in the Glowforge. All right, you can see if you click on this that it has a black fill and it has no stroke. So that means that the Glowforge will interpret this as an engraved pattern, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do. If instead you wanted to cut it out, and this is a little thin for cutting, but if you wanted to, you could turn it this way. All right, you could flip that fill in stroke. Now I do want it to be engraved, so I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Okay, at this point, I am going to start sketching out my text. Now this is going to be a welcome to the world little baby sign. So I type welcome to the world. I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight it. I'm gonna use little dinosaur and let's call it 100 font for now. We're gonna adjust this later to curve it, but I just wanna give it, um, Oh, we'll get to that point when we get there. <laughs> so I'm adjusting things just to kind of make sure that everything is going to look nice together. I want this to be, this is, I'm wondering if I have my snap to grid on. I don't. It's just probably because I'm zoomed out so far. So the, the precision of your arrow key motions um, shift depending on how, how zoomed you are and, and the sort of increments that you can move. Okay. So I think that's pretty decent. We're going to just go ahead again and make sure that those are aligned. They were not. So it's a good thing we did that. And then I'm just going to scooch them over until it looks roughly centered. We don't need to worry about it being act, you know, perfect right now. All right. Now, so that's a welcome to the world. You can go ahead and create your outlines if you're going to keep it straight. I'm going to show you in a little bit how to curve it um, along the top edge. So you can do that if you would like as well. And then we're going to put the name in little dinosaur font, but we're going to use the um, script version. So Magnolia. And just make it pretty big. I'm using the shift click and drag method to resize this so that I preserve the proportions. And then Jane. And here I'll show you what would happen if I don't shift when I click to drag. Oh no, it stretches it. And that's terrible. Let's not do that. Okay, so shift click and drag. And you can nestle it or you can center it. You can just kind of eyeball and see what you like best. OK. 
Okay, when you have these um, situated the way that you like them, go ahead and right click to create outlines and then go to your Pathfinders panel and click to Unite. Reminder, if you don't have a Pathfinders panel, Window Pathfinder will bring up the whole panel. Okay, and then Jane will repeat that here. Um, in case you're not familiar with why we Pathfinder Unite, do you see these little overlapping lines? Okay. Uh, the Glowforge will cut those out separately or engrave them separately. And so what that means is that these little patches right in between will not engrave. The Glowforge interprets overlapping engraves as sort of, it's like a double negative. So it, it cancels out. All right, so we just wanna click that to unite that as well. And that is great. And now if you want, you can put baby details at the bottom. So maybe you wanna put, I'm gonna go back to my regular script here. Maybe you wanna put August 24th. Let's make this much smaller. Okay, so you can do all the baby details right across the bottom, August 24th, 2021, whatever her weight was, time of birth, all that good stuff, if you want, or you can just leave it as a simple name sign. All right, I'm gonna leave it as a simple name sign, I think. Okay, now how are we gonna get a sign? Well, you could certainly, of course, just do a, a round, or you could just do a rectangle, even a rectangle with rounded corners, all of that would look great. Um, but I'm gonna show you something a little bit more advanced where you can have a sign that follows the, the, the contours of this drawing. Okay, so that's that's what we're, what we're getting at here. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and click both of your uh, floral elements, object, group them, okay? If you want, you can take a, a minute to just uh, horizontally align everything. Now you'll see that when I did that, this Jane dot is overlapping with the Magnolia G, so that's fine, but we also, we wanna go ahead and just unite that, okay? And that way we don't have any missing bits right there. So it's good to take care of that business as soon as you notice it so that you don't forget. Okay, so now that we have our over, I'm sorry, now that we have our, our grouped floral elements here, <sighs> It gets a little complicated, but again, you can do this. Just follow along right with me. Come up to Object, Path, Offset Path, and you can experiment. See, I like this half inch already, but you can see if you like a, a third of an inch better, if you like a closer contour, or if you like even um, a thicker contour, it's up to you. I'm gonna use this, um, this 0.5. And if yours is not showing up like that, make sure that this preview box is checked, all right? I'm gonna leave that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just swap the fill and stroke so I can kind of see what I'm working with here. I'm gonna go ahead and object ungroup. So that's gonna ungroup this set from that set. And then I'm gonna click this one, object ungroup. And what that does is it ungroups the engrave from the outline. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Object ungroup. Okay, uh, so obviously we don't want it to just be two random things and a bunch of engraved nothingness. So we're gonna fill this in with something, okay? And I'm actually gonna, this is, I'm sure that there are simpler or, or different ways to do this, but I'm going to just do a box first and then we'll go from there. So I just wanna make sure that these are connecting in a way that looks decent. All right, and then we'll, we'll refine from there. I'm gonna do, add a curve up there, as I mentioned. Um, but you just, you, you've got a lot of eyeballing balling to do right here. Um, and what you're paying attention to is this outer contour. Don't worry about uh, the fact that these are intersecting or anything like that, okay? Because we're gonna use the Pathfinder Unite uh, to merge these shapes. So just get it as close to, you know, something that looks reasonable to you as possible. I'm actually gonna zoom in so that I can scooch this up just a tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit. Okay, now once you're happy, click all three outlines. And so you'll click and then you can shift click to select the others. All right, and then Pathfinder Unite. Now maybe you love it just as it is. Maybe you don't, okay? If you love it how it is, that's beautiful. You can stop here. Just adjust your wording to, to, to look nice within the new contours. However, I am gonna add a little bit of a curve. So I'm gonna use the ellipse tool. I'm just gonna, oh, that's real small. Um, I'm gonna try again <laughs> and do maybe a four inch by four inch and then we'll just click and drag to make it look um, reasonable. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag it up to about there um, and then over. 
Ooh, let me go ahead and swap that fill and stroke just so that I can see better. And on this, in this case, you want to just be paying attention to the part that's going to show right above the rectangle. Don't worry about anything else. All right. Because there's nothing, I mean, you can certainly bring it down and do this part too, but I recommend that if you want to add a curve to the bottom also, do that separately. I'm not adding a curve to the bottom today, but you can certainly repeat the process if it makes you happy. Okay, so now once you have a, uh, a, an ellipse shape that you like that's poking out up here just the right amount, I just don't know. I need to adjust a little more, I think. And for me, it's uh, if you're using my shapes, it's important to pay attention like right here and right here, in my opinion. You could certainly expand it to kind of come there to there, but just pay attention to that top top little bit. Okay. Now, this is gonna, this is maybe gonna get a little confusing at this part, but right now, what I want you to do is select that ellipse and just copy it. All right. Don't worry about anything else right now. Just copy it. Um, that's gonna help us curve this in a bit. All right, so once you've copied it, you don't have to paste it anywhere. Just just follow along with me. Select these two outlines and Pathfinder Unite. OK, and now you have a beautiful curve up top, which is lovely. OK, now we had this here just to kind of get a sense for the words, but we're going to delete that right now and we're going to edit paste in place. And that's going to put our little ellipse back here. Now, instead of using the text or I'm sorry, the type tool, you're going to click and hold and do the type on a path tool. Then you're going to type on this path. OK, and you'll do the same thing. Welcome to the world. Uh oh, so Welcome to the world. And. I am going to just click and turn that into I think it was size 100 font that we liked and go ahead and just uh oh, align it center and you'll see that it kind of jumped all weird. It does that these type on a path can get a little complicated and you'll use these um, lines here to move. So there are the, the sort of start finish lines and then there's this one and you'll see that I clicked and dragged it all the way around and you'll see this magenta line popped up which tells me that I'm right in the center so it's kind of perfect but just for the future um, if you want to type it on the inside of a path you just drag it to the inside of the shape. Okay so just as a heads up for later. All right. So at this point, I am happy with that because it's perfectly centered. Obviously, it's on top of the sign. That's not ideal. Um, so what we we'll want to do is click, uh, sorry, right click, create outlines. OK, and that gets rid of that big ellipse. And now we just have our perfectly curved words and we're going to put it wherever it looks best to us. And in fact, what we should probably do at this point is come group these again. And then just select everything and horizontal align center. Okay, reminder, you can object align horizontal align center too. Okay, and then you can decide if you wanna maybe just make that a smidgy bit smaller, but I'm okay with that. All right, and now I wanna add a couple of little, actually first what I wanna do is make this smaller because this is giant. And if you're doing a door hanger sign, this is a great size. Okay, so let's um, select all. You can even make it probably 18 inches wide and it'll all fit on here and that's great. Um, but I don't want it to be quite that big. I'm thinking of a, a little smaller, maybe a bassinet sign. So I'm going to make mine about six inches wide instead. Zoom it on in. And now we're going to put little um, holes here or you can optionally put uh, little holes here for um, hanging rope. Oh, that's way too big. Let's do like a. 0.15 maybe okay and then um so i'm probably going to delete these on my uh, on mine but you can use them if you like uh and then you can add one right over here i'm trying to find the right spot and you want to get it roughly in the right spot it doesn't have to be perfectly centered yet if you do decide to include hanging rope space on yours you can then select both circles by uh, shift clicking object group and then you can just do the horizontal align center thing again just to make sure that they're perfect okay um now again i'm taking these off of mine but you can keep them if you're doing like a big door hanger or something like that so i'm going to go ahead and do that let's go ahead and save our file magnolia jane um floral bassinet sign it's always good to name your files very specifically, even if you think, oh, I'll always remember that and then come down and save it as an SVG. 
SVG 1.0 and turn off responsiveness so it doesn't resize on you in the Glowforge interface. Okay, at this point, you can go ahead and send it to the Glowforge. All of these inner parts with a fill and no stroke will engrave and all uh, this outer part here, which is no fill and a, an outer stroke will cut. Okay, um, and you can play around with your engrave settings in the Glowforge user interface if you want a lighter engrave, but you can also just do the proof grade engrave settings and it'll be nice and deep and dark. All right, if you have any questions, oh, I know that was a lot, let me know in the comments and remember there is a link in the description for you to get these exact florals that I drew on my um, iPad just in case you don't have access to an iPad and the Procreate app. All right, see you next week.